Hi, and greetings, NAS and Pro community. My name is Wendy Henricks, and I'm from Alexander's Aesthetics. And I have my beautiful mom here with me, um, C. Michael from Alexander's Aesthetics in California. And as you know, we are a family-run business, but really the legacy of the business came is from my mom. So I wanted to take an opportunity to capture um, her experience in the industry and do a talk with her on building a legacy, 25 years in business and counting. So thank you, mom, for taking the time to let me interview you for um, NAS and Pro. I just think your experience and um, length in the industry really adds a lot of value that I think would be helpful for a lot of people. Thank so. you. Thank you. Well, hello, NASA and Pro people. Here we are. We love going to the NASA and Pro shows and meeting all of you. So um, I hope that this will give you some insight about business. Not that I'm a business perfect person, but I have been in business a while. So here we go. Okay, great. All right. So what inspired you to get into this business and how has your vision evolved over time? Well, you know, I've always worked for someone. I worked for Bank of America. I worked for a ski company and did accounts receivable and payable. I worked for a travel agency and got wonderful um, customer service skills. And when the opportunity came up for my husband and I to buy this business, the timing was perfect. And we thought, well, why not? You know, we're here in our life. We don't need to work for people anymore. Let's give it a try. So we did, we jumped in with all fours and um, it has actually been an amazing um, journey. But I do feel like my work experience um, in the jobs that I have had really helped me to move into the business and feel confident in what I was doing, even though I did not know anything about skincare. So that was a learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But your business background, you know, doing the like accounts receivables and and working at the bank and like more of the financial stuff helped you or and the travel agency too. Right. Learning to work out problems, being with people on a regular basis. And of course, okay. um, always knowing accounts receivable and payables helps you understand the logistics of the finance part of the company. Yes. Oh, OK. Yeah. Good point. So probably helped with like customer service a lot too. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, what would you say your core values are that guide your business decisions? Well, you know, we have always um, in our family and everything else that we do in life is, you know, be honest, <laughs> um, <laughs> be kind, um, work hard. And um, those are, are the values that we continue to this day um, as we brought on our own business and we had other things to look at as far as products and good products and dependability on where we were and how we're doing it. But basically, I would say, you know, honesty um, and hardworking is really the key to most of our success. Yes, I agree. And that is, doesn't matter new things that come out, it's always the same for, you know, things change, but those things kind of stay, stay true through time. Yeah, solid. Those are solid yeah. things that, you know, you can always fall back on in your, your employees and your customers and your vendors know that about you. And hopefully they in return, give it back. Yes. Well, speaking of employees and customers and vendors, um, how do you ensure that all of the people that you're doing business with kind of align to your company values? Well, it, you know, it, when it really goes back to um, hard work, um, setting an example for your employees, um, mm -hmm being kind, getting to know your customers, getting to know your vendors, building relationships, all of that has really has to be a step forward that 
continues to um, solidify our business. Um, you know, when your employees see that you're hardworking and trustworthy, they kind of take on that attitude. And when they take yeah. on that attitude, it passes on to the customers and they're like, gosh, these people are really, they care, they're hardworking and they're gonna be there for us. So I just think it it's a kind of trickle down effect, isn't it? Yeah. You, you set an example and you hope that, you know, and it's not always the case. I mean, but I would say majority of the time over the 25 years that we have been in business, I see that as a, a very strong point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um. What qualities do you believe are essential for a successful business leader? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think you have to know your strengths, but you have to know your weaknesses. Okay. And you can't be afraid to reach out and ask for help, whether you know it's outside of your business or within your business, your employees and your vendors. You, you can't let pride get in the way of moving forward. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so by knowing your weaknesses, then you can, you know, instead of being afraid to ask for help. Yeah. And, you know, getting knowledge from the people who work for you or the vendors that you have just increases your business and helps you move forward. So I right. would reach out because there are people, there, are mentors that I had throughout the years have really um, helped me grow the company and understand, um, what people really do need and want. Yes. Okay. So moving on to customers, you know, obviously a huge part of our business is customer service and our customers are what make our business happen. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, so I want to move into kind of what it's like to have a customer experience with with us and what's important, you know, in terms of what we set forward. So what do you believe is the key to building strong relationships with your customers? Um, I think, uh, geez, that's a good one. Um, you know, I hate to keep going back to the same thing, but you know, the foundation of our company is what helps us build relationships with our employees and our customers yeah yeah and so I don't want to keep repeating myself but I do believe that um with uh key employees um you can you know build that build them to move into the future and meet the goals that you're looking for yeah for sure and I think that's um that's really true. What um, can you tell me? Because we all run across people that have, you know, um, 99 percent of our customers are amazing. Um, but then, you know, there are challenging situations, too. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about how you manage those relationships? Because like we talked about before, it's always you know, fun to talk about all the loving, you know, things that yeah. we do in the wonderful relationships, but there are some challenges when we're dealing with the, when all of us are working with the general public. Sure. So what, sure. Um, can you talk a little bit about your strategy for that? Sure. So um, I've always believed, and we try and make that thought throughout the office the same, that the client is always correct. Not that they really are always correct, but that is the person, that's what we presume at the time. So talking to, talking through an issue with a client, listening to their concerns. Yeah. And not, not defending yourself, but saying, we're going to resolve this together. Uh, you know, there could have been a misunderstanding However, let's work together to build this. We want to make sure that we meet your needs and that at the same time, you understand where we're coming from. So we kind of have that approach going forward. Yeah. Okay. And have you, has that worked in the past? I mean, how often do you think you have to do that or? Um, you know, there's some clients are really understanding and then there are some that are so busy and they just want to 
it done the way they want it done right away. And I think you have to kind of read into that and know that that's the case. And to be honest with you, there have been a couple of times in 25 years of business that I have said, I don't think we can do business together. Uh, right. and I think you have to recognize that there are some people that no matter how you approach it, we just can't seem to make it happen. And if I have a client who lashes out at my employees, I, I really need to, uh, you know, and I know that my employees haven't done anything wrong. That really puts us in a very awkward situation. So yeah. we'll give it a few times, but I honestly have to say in 25 years, there are two people that I really and truly said, we cannot do business with you any longer. Well, and, that's a and I think you have to know thinking. that. I think you yeah. have to be honest with yourself and, you know, do everything you can to resolve the issues, but you know, you're not going to meet everybody's needs. Uh, hopefully you can, but mm -hmm. uh, not always. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really important thing to realize because we're all kind of people pleasers in this industry. Well, in and this industry, we are, we are. Yeah. Um, so in terms of vendors, um, how did you get started on picking the vendors that we want to, that we carry as our lines. And then as we continue to bring on new vendors, uh -huh. what are you looking for, um, for people that, you know, are kind of the, the products that we carry? Yeah. So, uh, when we bought the business 25 years ago, we had a couple of products that were pretty solid. Um, and, um, uh, then we went, uh, to Cosmo Pro actually, or Cosmo Prof. And um, while we were there, we were approached by a skincare line to carry them. And so we talked with them in detail there and in Las Vegas and realized that we really had the same values. Um, okay. uh, and they needed someone and we needed something. And it was just a good partnership. And so now as we move forward, and, you know, sometimes we look for things, but I would say the majority of the vendors come to us and mm -hmm. there's um, a list of questions that actually Wendy has prepared and that we ask the vendors to make sure that we're equal in how we're thinking about business. So, um, you know, we want them to understand our policy and we want to understand them. And we're very dedicated to our vendors as they are to us. So it, it was a win-win situation moving forward and just making sure that we're all on the same page, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just makes it, you know, uh, click better, right? Because it's what we're selling to our customers and we know we can stand behind it and... Yeah. We and they're going to get the same service. Yeah. Yeah. We need support from our vendors mm -hmm. um, and more than, more than you think, you know, you, you have to be able to say this happened. How can you support me? And we really need someone that can do that for us. Yeah, totally. Yep. Um, all right. So um, customers, vendors, employees, those are all the people, but what about the behind the scenes? There's a lot of behind the scenes. Oh, stuff. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were doing all day. So um, what challenges have you faced in the growth of your business? Because when you started, it was so tiny and, you know, this little store in Burlingame, right, was the first? Uh, it, was in, it was in San Bruno, actually. San Bruno, okay. Yeah, on El Camino. And so what challenges have you faced as you've grown, the industry's changed, you know, how do you pivot and kind of move through some challenges? Well, we, had, we had a couple of challenges. We had um, we had a skincare line that was very solid and really good, and um, they pulled the carpet, and <laughs> so there we were stuck uh, without a really good skincare line. So we had to hop, skip, and jump over and find um, a really dependable, good skincare line that we have now carried for 22 years. So it really has been a good partnership. Yeah. But I think the biggest challenge or the biggest 
hurdle that we had is COVID, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, we were hit with COVID and um, we had to lay off our employees for three months. Um, we couldn't let clients come into the shop, um, but yet we knew that they were in need. So my husband and I said, okay, and we went into the shop every day for three months mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we filled online orders. We left orders out on the front step so people could pick them up. We drop yeah. ship to uh, their clients who were dying for skincare and couldn't get facials. So um, it, that was three months of a real learning curve. Um, yeah. And when we came back from COVID, those clients that we supported during that time are diehard clients. I mean, oh. we knew we were there for them and yes. and we were, and it was important that we be there for yes. them. So I do yes. think the COVID probably for most people have been, has been a very big challenge. Yeah. Yeah, for sure it was. Yeah, for sure. Um, but Financially you, and emotionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. And, and absolutely. the industry, you know, when all the estheticians were shutting down, it was, yeah. you know. Um, what processes and systems have you put in place um, that you feel like has been valuable in keeping your business running smoothly? Um, you know, we have um, excellent job descriptions for each employee so mm -hmm. they know exactly what their duties are each day mm -hmm. we also have an employee handbook that mm -hmm. guides them on uh, what they do and how the business is run so i think those two things um have been um a tool that we all have fallen back on um and i I guess really, um, am I going the wrong way? But I'm thinking social media has really um, come to the forefront. Probably, how long do you think? I don't know. Long time. It's not my. Yeah. Job, I, mean, I think we just started when I started here. So maybe eight years ago. Eight years yeah. ago. And uh, so for the young, and well, it doesn't have to be young, but for the estheticians who are social media people, um, and I think most of our, our employees and my daughter, you, Wendy, um, have moved the company in a direction much greater than I could have ever done. It has opened up a lot of doors and, um, and we're, we're looking forward to moving even further ahead. Uh, with those kind of that technology so I it's important that we have it and if it were just me running the business I'd still be handwriting UPS <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're thankful for technology that is for sure yeah yeah, yeah. that's definitely true for sure um how important is it to you to be financially you know, literate or responsible in your, as a business owner and what steps do you take to stay on top of it? Oh boy. Well, <laughs> you know, it's important. That's for sure. Um, you know, I have, you know, I, I just have in my head where our company is, how much we have to sell each day to stay profitable. Um, but I'm not a big profit and loss analyzer. So, um, we kind of, don't have a great plan <laughs> right now. That's why we're working with a, a business coach to get us on board to understand our profit and loss a little better. Um, I know I know where we are as a company because I've been there for 25 years, but if I walked out the door, it would be unfair to whoever was taking over um, to leave that. So we are working on a plan to have you know, some strategies in place on how we might move forward better. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also your QuickBooks does, oh, yeah. you know, Quick your QuickBooks books. is all your, that's been great for both of us. Well, and, and the more you use QuickBooks, I don't know if everybody has QuickBooks in salons, but, um, you know, there's so many reports and so many, so much information you can get from that. Yes. You got to have the time to get in there and, and dig it out. So um, it is a wonderful tool. Absolutely. Yes. You're absolutely yeah. right. 
-hmm. Yeah. It's there. It's just, yeah, it's all what do we there. do with it now? What do we do with it? You yeah. know? Well, I can look at the bottom line. I know how much we need to make each day yeah. to move forward. And, you know, you get a little concerned and then all of a sudden you have a great day and you're thinking, okay, we got it. And, you know, yeah, it, it it's a, a merry-go-round sometimes. Yeah. Yes, it is. But, <laughs> but what is interesting to me is even 25 years in, you uh, are still open to learning new th new ways of doing things. Well, and so I think that's something I'd like to know more about. Yeah. Uh, you know, I um, honestly feel like you have to move forward. I mean, you can't live in the past, on honestly. Um, I don't have that... Um, technology background um, and I can scoot around a little bit, but I really depend on my employees who really know how to do it. I depend on my daughter, you, Wendy, um, our marketing person. I mean, it has made such a difference in our business and, you know, being able to try and understand where uh, technology is going we have to, we have to keep going forward and we are. Yeah. But it's wonderful that you're embracing it. I mean, I know it's a little scary and that's it's very your... scary for us yeah. old people, <laughs> <laughs> but you are open to it. And I think yes. that's what I'm trying to get at is as a, as a leader of the company, you're showing all of us that you can continue to learn, even though you can yeah. run this business in your sleep. Well, maybe not in your sleep because you need it, but you yeah, in my know sleep. it inside and out and you yeah. can run it. Um, but to show all of us that you are, you're still open and continue open to continuing to learn. Yeah. And, and I do depend on my staff and you to help me through a lot of the technology part, but I am open to it. I truly, yeah. am. I know that is the way of the future and we need to, to get in there and do it. AI, here we come. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, yeah, I think that's great. So a little bit about the business coach, like what is a business coach doing for like, how, how did you decide to bring on a business coach and what is the business coach doing this? So, so late in the game of your career, you yeah. know what? Well, um, so we went to NASN pro, um, woo -woo. I know. And um, can I say a name or not? <laughs> I think so. And and there was a business coach that did a talk. Um, we were very impressed. We had been discussing, you know, how we're going to move forward, how to look at profit and loss and knowing that we're really not an expert in that. And when we heard this person talking about getting a business up and running and understanding where you are and how you can move forward. Um, the more we heard that person speak, the more co um, convinced that we needed to do that. So we got his information. It wasn't a quick decision. We talked about it for a couple of months, contacted him, and we are now in the process of working with him uh, to help us get to a point where I truly can retire eventually and um Wendy uh Wendy can take over both uh Alexander's Colorado and California um not I mean it would be not in person but obviously she could run both company because um we are working with our employees so they understand where we're going as a company through this coach he has made it available for us to really understand and have meetings with our employees one-on-one, -on -one, an hour meeting to understand what their goals are and they to understand what our goals are. And they're so excited about this. This is a movement that I had no idea was going to take off. So I honestly have to tell you, I if you need a business coach, you should really look into it because it's a, yes. a big help. Yeah. Yes. And contact us. We can give you the name. Or yes, absolutely. Look, look <laughs> on Nassim Nassim Pro. Sure yeah. somewhere in, in Yes. Pro. Yeah, yes. we're not pushing anybody or no. anything. I don't want to give that impression. But after 25 years of business, you know, we really did. We really needed that. And um, 
and with technology changing and all, we, we really needed to reposition ourselves to maintain a profit in the market. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, speaking of, since you brought up the fact that you are, want to retire, I wanted to talk a little bit about work-life balance because as a business owner, a lot of times it's hard, you know, a lot of people get into their own business thinking, you know, I'm going to have all this free time and, you know, all this freedom and I don't have anyone to report to. And the reality is running your own business takes a lot, a lot of time. Yeah. So how did you, and can be really demanding, how did you maintain a healthy work-life balance and or recommend to other business owners how to maintain that? Yeah. Well, first of all, I love my business. So that makes it easier. Um, I enjoy my vendors. I enjoy our clients. And I, and right now we have an amazing staff that, um, makes life so much easier for me but I think you do have to have a balance you know I try and walk every day I try and th uh, think about other things besides work that's not always easy but um, you know we love to travel so I make sure that we travel two or three times a year somewhere and uh, so I can come back and really know that I'm not you know, I'm not tied to the business to a point where I can't enjoy life because then what is the point, right? Yeah. But to go to work every day, um, honestly, I, I have to honestly tell you, I enjoy it and I would really miss, I will miss uh, my clients and my employees if, if and when I ever get to back out completely. <laughs> but yeah. I would say, you know, keep a balance, exercise, um, go out with your friends, travel, but maintain that business. And if you love your business, it's not too hard to do. Not too yeah, hard to do. That's good. Yeah. It's just sometimes there's so much to do. So it's hard yeah. to. Besides you know. that, ladies and gentlemen, I have four absolutely amazing grandchildren that I need to embrace and be around. So <laughs> that in my life as well. That's right. Yeah. And they love having you around for yeah. sure. Yeah. And what's interesting is the customers will miss you too. Like whenever we go to trade shows, people, I think it's cute. People say, where's Cece? People always call you Cece. Don't where call me Cece. Cece. <laughs> I know. C. Uh, Michael. C. Michael, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Um, what impact, last question, and then we'll wrap it up. What impact do you hope your business that you and dad have built will have beyond your time there and just financial success? I hope that um, we continue to employ good people and give them an opportunity to succeed in life and what they want to do in this industry. Mm, I think, um, lost my train of thought. So, um, I think that's important. I think to know that I've left the business in good hands with my daughter, of course, um, that the employees I have are happy there and they're excelling in their career, whether they want to stay with Alexander's or whether they need to move on, that we support that. Um, and I feel good at the end of the day when we know that that has happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Yes, there's, of course, financial success is important, but having that legacy that you leave behind is really what's going to well, make a difference. And I, and I do believe that people will look at Alexander's and say, I've always gotten good service, great products, um, happy employees, knowledgeable employees. And, um, you know, all of those things just make it easier to work with. So yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you would like to add? Um, thank you, NASA and Pro, for giving us an opportunity whenever we can. We love being there. We love the idea of education. Alexander's is, you know, we really believe in education and that just supports everything um, that we believe in as well. So it's a good partnership. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you.
Well, thanks, Mom, for You're doing welcome. the interview. You're sure welcome. Saying yes. She said yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Okay. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay, and guys. We'll see you the next NASA Pro. <laughs> yes. See Audio you at NASA Pro. Bye-bye. <laughs>